What's up guys, it's your Motivational Gamer and welcome to another video. Today's episode, hold on, let me see, 33? <laughs> Today's 33, alright, 33, alright, here we go, first day, first day, alright. So, uh, first and foremost guys, happy, super duper, califragilistic, expialidocious Thanksgiving to you guys. Um, I'm gonna leave the house, so I probably won't be streaming or anything tonight. Uh, Anna's daddy daughter day. Well, it's pretty much family day, so I won't be on later. Uh, I wanted to get this video in uh, as soon as I woke up so we can uh, kind of knock it out. So today is light and darkness scroll day. Now my main account, I haven't logged in for like six days, so I missed it. I'm a little late on my main. <laughs> but uh, on this account, you know, I've obviously been keeping up the parts. So we're going to summon it together. So before we summon it, of course, um, I, I'm just going to say this now. I hope I don't pull anything of consequence because if I do, then then I have a new unit to build. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so before, before we do that, before, before we do the summon, uh, let's talk about some changes that I made. So I five-starred my Dark Warbear and I five-starred my Lizardman, right? Uh, mainly because I'm explaining to you guys why. Um, in terms of progression, what I typically recommend is that your supports go first. So Shannon and Bella, right? Cookie cutter is what I recommend, okay? But since my runes have been falling better for uh, Bella and Shannon, I opted to do my Warbear and my Lizardman first because uh, since they're going to be a concrete part of my team, um, a and B because they're 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 always the ones that die first. They're dying first, and I and my supports are always staying alive last, right? Because their defense, their stats are higher, right? And my uh, my damage units are important. My warbear mainly because I need his attack break, and he always dies. And if Tion's not resing him in time or at all, uh, then I don't have an attack breaker, and then we're just relying on the damage of the lizardman, who is also a dying because. Um, his stat threshold isn't high enough yet either. So I went ahead and, uh, and five starred them to get the extra, you know, 20 to 30% stat bonus when they're maxed. Um, so they can stay alive a little bit more for now as we continue to farm runes. Okay. Does that make sense? What am? So that's why I did that. Um, I'm going to obviously continue to five star the rest of my team. Now, the beautiful thing about having a team that's five star, even if you don't intend on using them for the long haul, let's say if I do pull something of consequence out of this stupid light and dark scroll, um, is that when I do decide to six star something, um, I already have the five stars there. Even though they are five star max, I know it's a waste of time. I get it. But if there are units that you can easily replace, specifically the Wind Lizardman, specifically the dark war bear specifically all that jazz i have that i'm using right now um then it's pretty safe to feed does that make sense but if it's like a four star that's five star max please don't do it don't do it unless it's for fusion of course uh but otherwise you guys just kind of want to stick to the thing um somebody asked me a question in one of the comments too as well where they were like hey team g uh does that mean you know if you pull the water mystic wish that you should take shannon out immediately for giants too um, and my response to that is you don't have to, but it is safe to do so because Megan brings a lot of stuff to the table. She brings continuous damage, okay, which is basically no matter what her stats are, she's going to remove 5% of the, uh, you know, up to 5% of the, the giant's HP every time she lands a continuous damage effect. She brings beneficial effect block and removal, which is nice if your Bella misses C's. So to keep that attack buff and the defense buff off of the giant, um, which is really good. And then she also brings the defense and, and the attack buff with the attack bar reduction. Now, granted, Shannon can use her buff more frequently because her cooldown times are lower when she's max skilled, but Megan is just Megan. Yummy. You know I mean? And she trans she transitions a lot better uh, than Shannon into a lot of other content. Now, don't get me wrong, Shannon is great for TOA, again, for the AoE, but all things considered equal, Megan's just going to bring a little bit more to the table, mainly because of the beneficial effect block, especially in Dragons. Um, so that's why I recommend the, the Megan switch, the Water Mystic Witch switch, excuse me, uh, because she can transition so well into everything else, like everything else. <laughs> so uh, that that's the big thing that you have to look at when dealing with Megan. Now, if you don't have the skill up fodder for Megan, then you Shannon until you get the skill up. So Shan at least Megan's third skill is max. But you're going to want Megan full skill all the way across the board um, for her to be like super duper effective. So that's something like if anybody had that question, then that's something that you guys want to look at. So anyway, let's go ahead and some of the scroll. Uh, you guys want to do the unknown scrolls first? No. <laughs> all right, here we go. 
you know, I've only gotten lightning one lightning one time on this account, so maybe maybe this is it, huh? Nope. Mm -mm. Don't give me basalt. No, give me some stupid crap. There we go. That works. Thrain. So let's talk about Thrain. Um, the Dark Grim Reaper here. He's actually really good. So his third hero meteorites a doomsday fall on the enemies and uh, fall onto the enemies and the inflicted damage increases with time. Uh, stuns the enemy for one turn if the enemy is under continuous damage. Okay. And then um, second scale spreads the plague to all enemies with 80% chance to inflict two continuous damage effects that last for two turns. And the first is, you know, he just attacks. He gets another turn if the enemy dies. So uh, Thrain is actually really good for TOA, TOA hard. Uh, mainly because the longer in your fight, the stronger third scale gets. And then not only that, but because of the AOE continuous damage effect, um, his second skill does not deal damage. Okay, so you don't have to worry about glancing hit or none of that other crap, and he just basically applies continuous damage effects. Uh, once you max him out, uh, his skill 2, he gets a harmful effect rate and the cooldown time reduction. So he's doing a 3 turn continuous damage effect AoE, and then he also is at 100% once he's maxed. Okay, And then uh, this third one, he gets a 4 turn cooldown. Uh, but again, Thrain is really, really good for TOA. Really, really good for TOA, TOA hard. Um, could you use them for... Um, for dragons or something yeah i guess you could <laughs> yeah i guess so especially with the continuous damage if you guys are trying to do something like kill the towers uh while still focusing the boss especially with three turn if you want to put them on like bio violent runes or something like that um he could definitely work there because use them in giants yeah uh you know as, a, as an attacker aoe um you definitely can because the longer you fight the stronger he's going to get but ideally um in giants you want to be in the fight less <laughs> oh you know a less amount of time you know same thing really with dragons you don't want to really be in there for a long time but in situations like TOA hard when you're in stages for five years Thrain becomes a boss <laughs> a boss I want to be boss yeah Thrain becomes a boss so uh, that's a little bit about Thrain um <clears throat> am I going to use them in any of my compositions right now probably not um maybe uh but as of right now no <laughs> as of right now no i'm not going to i'm just going to continue uh farming these dungeons you guys might be wondering why i'm not going to the scenario to level up my war bear and my lizardman <clears throat> well my war bear i use angelmon on um i just pulled the king angelmon from my wish which i will probably feed to my lizard man especially if it's a wind one um but the reason why is because again i hate scenario um there's <sighs> I mean, I could, I guess, because I still need fodder for, uh, skill fodder for Bella and the War Bear, but I just, I just don't want to. <laughs> I just don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. I just, I just don't want to. I'd rather just get runes. And I mean, yeah, I level uh, exponentially slower, but, you know, I'd rather just get runes. Uh, but, but that's, that's what's going on with that. But so far, so good. Uh, so we got two five stars, two out of five. Um, you know, I got a ton of rainbow mon that, you know, I'm working on, I'll continue to feed them and they'll do their thing. And then, uh, from there, um, we'll try to make some more five stars, uh, get our, our team full five star and then get our team full five star max. And then we should be GB six worthy by then. I mean, cause you guys saw, like I was almost able to clear GB six, except, you know, my, my team started to die, you know, at the end, you know, I don't know, you know, at the end, some bullshit. But uh, but that's what had happened there. And uh, so one thing before we bring the video to a close, guys, um, in terms of leveling, like I, I know a lot of you guys have questions as to how you should level. I talked about this a little bit in the beginning of the series where I was like, look, um, you know, X, Y, Z, this is how you level. But the best way to do it, guys, is to really just use the double XP that Khan gives you. Uh, do not waste your crystals on the one day double XP or three day double XP. Don't waste it. Schedule your leveling sessions around the free 12 hour XPs um, that Com gives you because, uh, I mean, that's literally all the time you need. You know, like, unless you, you have a plan and you got 5 million monsters that you need to level, which you shouldn't have. If you haven't been buying an ass ton of premium packs and you've been keeping the main thing the main thing here, um, then and only then would I really even waste the time and, and I'd really only get a hundred, I'd get the one day double XP because you don't need a three day double XP, like, because literally you can love all your monsters like that. Um, and then, and then from there, like, 
use the comms, double XP, or whatever double XP you decided, and go to your level of choice. If you need skill up fodder, then go to, you know, whatever pertaining stage. Somebody said that, oh, TFG, I don't understand your logic, because why wouldn't you just go to Tulane Forest, because then you have the Inu and the Warbearer. I was like, well, because I don't want to split it up. You understand? It's just like, okay, I get it. Like, you can farm there and get the war bear, but at the same time, it's just like, why would I farm for the war bear in a stage when I could just pull them out of an unknown scroll or just buy them out of the shop? See what I'm saying? So that way I just have the consistent focus, like, in in, in Garen Force, because all I need is the Inu. I can't pull the Inu out of an unknown scroll or buy the Inu out of the shop, you know? Um, but I can get the war bear. So, like, and then it's going to take even more time because now I'm farming for two units in one place, which is to me is just time consuming it's pointless right because then what happens what happens if you get neither one then you're just sitting there getting all kinds of bullshit right so that's why i don't do that um but in terms of leveling like find the stage like people are like oh fame in hell or aiden forest hell like yeah that's great if you have the units to do that but there are other stages that you guys will look at for energy efficiency like brofagus uh it's pretty good um also um don't be ashamed to do fame and hard um, or fame and normal if you guys just look for energy efficiency um, Just because like I mean yeah the XP numbers aren't as high as you know fame and hell But if your team is not efficient or your your farming unit is not efficient Enough to do it then it's not gonna serve you any good uh, Another thing I like to do is if you don't have a soul uh, like a solo unit that can farm But you're like let's say leveling four units at a time make a team um, of units that you're leveling and level them in the location that's typically harder for you to do with a solo clear. So like if you have like four water units or seven or four fire units that you're leveling, put them all in the team and level them together in, in a difficulty that's harder that you might be able to clear because you're you're using a team to level instead of just one unit trying to solo the whole thing. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, in terms of scalable difficulty, Mount Sis is probably the easiest, stage one, two, and three. Um, and then from there, you, you just kind of move up. Uh, Mount Swift, if you need something from, or Swift White, if you, Mount Swift White, Mount Swift White, Mount, Mount White, we're going. <laughs> if you need something from there, you know, up to Tamor Desert. And then if Tamor Desert is cake for you, then you can try Brofagus and then you can get more uh, XP from there. And then of course, Famine, then Aiden. And if you're really a boss, then you can do Charuka. Rap City, right? Boom, money in the bank. And realistically though guys um leveling sessions really shouldn't happen that often like i said if you if you schedule them around the 12 hour xp that kind gives you every month or like when you five star monster your first time or six star monster your first time i mean you're set i mean literally set like you should probably have a leveling session maybe a couple times a month unless you're like super pay to play then you're probably having them maybe four times a month uh like once a week ish is about right but otherwise like there's no need guys i'm telling you there's absolutely no need to buy double xp packs like the 100 crystal ones and three and it's don't even waste your money like it's it's perfect everything's already set up for you guys to win um the big thing is positioning yourself to where you guys spend most of your time getting runes and then like a small percentage or a small fraction of the time leveling and grading up your monsters because grading up is like that and then right back to the grind so that being said guys that's all i wanted to cover today hopefully that was able to help clear up some issues for you for some of you and uh, that's it y'all i love you guys happy thanks to giving man and we will see you guys in the next video peace